<clears throat> yep, I am on my morning mental this morning. I bid you a grand rising, grand rising. I bid you a grand rising this morning to all of the children and the worshipers of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Grand Rising. Grand Rising. Welcome to the Morning Mental. If there's anybody who's unfamiliar with the Morning Mental, the Morning Mental is where we get our dose of Things to think about. And what a lot we got to think about this morning. What a lot we have to talk about this morning on the morning mental. What's on my mind this morning as I speak to the children of the Most High. I bid you a grand rising. You know... Somebody once told me, said that if you have some things in your life, mm, grand rising to all of you, grand rising, grand rising, grand rising, grand rising. Yes, shake the sleep out your eyes, wake up your mind. It's time for us to go back to school. We are in the crucible, this place that we call Earth. We're down here in the kitchen because in the kitchen is where we put the heat on. In the kitchen is where we find the pressure. In the kitchen is where we put everything together and try to come up with something sweet. Maybe sometimes something sour. But either way, I'm on the morning mental. I'm going to give y'all a moment to get up in here. I know it's early. I know a lot of y'all who are actually here to hear a good word to get you going through the day. Y'all know y'all in the right place. But I know a lot of y'all just dig around and mess. And you like to be spectators. That's cool, too. You can spectate here. and Maybe you'll get infected to participate. I see y'all. I see everybody coming in. But I also know that I'm also watching, and it's on my morning mental, I'm watching, and you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their works. In other words, do you go by what they say, or do you go by what they do? Grand rising. Now, A lot of y'all don't understand that there are levels to anything in life. Yes, there are. And um, just to show you what I'm talking about on the morning mental, I'm going to show you that there are certain levels of dedication and that the real, the real people will stay with you, grand rising to all of you, grand rising official J1, grand rising uh, Katie John Prill, grand rising, I see y'all coming up in here, unapologetic apology, alumni, grand rising to you, I'm going to stop because I see so many good people still hang, staying on the boat, still hanging on to the roller coaster, I see people Still in for the long haul. But I also see, as I taught y'all before, don't trip. Because I told you before. And now you're seeing it. And it's blowing your mind. I know your mind is blown. Your mind is blown because I told you we have three groups of people here. Y'all stop tripping. Tell a friend that the morning mental is on the air. They're not going to get no alert. We've been new that Instagram is going to hate on us. But Instagram, believe it or not, is not hating on us as much as something that's even worse than Instagram. I found out on my morning mental that when I thought about it, well, let me show you how a lot of y'all are 
when it comes to the morning mental and when it comes to the struggle and when it comes to the um, the whole facts over feelings, the whole NFAC salute this morning. Let me show you how a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all see this shirt and say, oh, I want a shirt. All right. And you see me wearing the shirt. You see me talking to you in the shirt and the shirt is in your face and that's how you want to be. But a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all don't realize that in order to get this shirt, you got to do something. So let me do, let me do my little illustration here and take care of two birds, one stone. Hold on a second. We're on the morning mental. This is how a lot of y'all is. This right here. This is life. Put that right there. That's life. A lot of y'all are just like this. You want to be in that cup. You want to wear this shirt. You want to be in that cup. Hold up. Hold up. I told you, this is you, this is you right here. As a matter of fact, this is some, some Tazo Chai organic. You the good stuff. You know, you, you know all your lessons. You, you eating right and you, you praising the most high and you walk around telling your brothers and sisters you awake and you know, grand risings and you telling everybody, this you, this you, this you. And you act like you got it together and you ready. That's what you're saying. So we say, okay, so this is what we do with you. We take you and we look inside and see what you made of. And when we look at you, you look like, well, you look like you're supposed to look. You come in, you meet all the qualifications. And this is you. We're on the morning mental. This y'all. This is my people. This is it right here. This y'all. That right there, that's where y'all want to be. So you talk the talk, say you're ready to walk the walk, tell everybody you're down for the call. This is you. So you try to join something because, remember, you just after the shirt. That's it. You come out there, you jump into this situation, and a lot of y'all look good. Got the, got the lingo down. Watch what I'm talking about now. Everything in that cup is going to stay in that cup. It ain't going to come out, but you in there with us. Now you in the cup. Everybody going along wherever the cup go, you going too. Notice no matter where this cup go, there you go. Telling all your friends, Hey, I'm awake. I'm a part of this situation until. This scalding, boiling, bubbling, hot liquid hits you, and this happens. Now, you in here with us. Mm -hmm. It's hot in here. As a matter of fact, it's so hot in here that if you're not what you say you are, being in here, It'll get you killed. It'll get you boiling. Scald you up. At the very least, it's going to leave you marked for life. Some people, they don't survive being in here. I see you, fo fo fo. A lot of y'all cannot survive when the heat hits you for real. Because when that heat comes, we find out what you're made of. If this is not what it says it is, if this is not T, then we're going to find out what it is. Big shout out, Black Self Defense Coalition, my West Coast operation. I see you. Four, 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 I see you, solid power. When that heat hits you, oh, when that heat hits you, 
You see, heat does several things. Heat not only can take things that's not supposed to go together and push them together into one and unify them. Don't y'all see what I'm talking about on the morning mental? Oh, Lord, you missed it. It's not until the heat come. It's not until we under pressure. It's not until we all get broken down to what we truly are that this heat right here that you wanted to get involved in, that you wanted to be a part of, that you claim you were so awake for, that when this heat hits your ass, you're going to do one or two things. Either A, you're going to become one of us, or B, you're going to suffer the consequences of getting into the heat. And you knew that this is only for those who are designed to stay in the heat. Not for those who think that they can be in the heat and still come out the other side and be the same. My brothers and sisters find ourselves this morning in a place of introspection. In retrospection, we got a new guest today. I want y'all. I want to introduce y'all to the Ghetto Fly. He's in here with us. The Ghetto Ducks couldn't get in because we in the kitchen this morning talking about the heat, the crucible. So they sent in a boy, Ghetto Fly, to my man DC Young Fly. I know he's not your cousin, but we got Ghetto Fly up in here today. He gonna be with us. I'm glad to see Ghetto Fly. I'm gonna tell you why because Ghetto Fly, and I let him in is. The folks that are being critical. The ghetto fly flies around and aggravates the hell out of us, but he really don't want to be in the situation. Ghetto fly. Ghetto fly is in this piece because he want to signify. He want to know, but he don't want to be, he don't want to be in it. Ghetto fly is here on the morning mental with us. He's going to be in here for a minute because you and I both know. That if Ghetto Fly hops his ass into the mix of where we go, if the Ghetto Fly hops his ass into the pressure crucible in the Ghetto Fly, come on, bro. Come on, jump up in here. He's not going to do it. I can beg. Y'all watch me talk to the Ghetto Fly. It's not going to happen. Why won't the Ghetto Fly get in to this scalding hot situation? Because the ghetto fly knows he's not built for that situation. But he's built to be annoying. He's built to buzz in your ear. The ghetto fly. There you go. He up in here with us, too. So I welcome all my ghetto flies that them tune into the morning mental. Because you ain't trying to get in the mix. You're not worthy to wear this shirt. I understand. Just like they say, many are called. If you were chosen on the morning mental, I want to take a few minutes and talk to my my young soldiers and my my young soldierettes. That's the young men and the young, the, the children that have said words to me like when I grow up, I want to be in the black army. The little children that are saying I'm not playing cowboys and Indians no more. I'm playing NFAC. This is what the children are saying to the to my seniors out there, to the people who are about to go home to glory that said to me, you put a tear in my eye, son, because I didn't think that there was any brothers and sisters left that was brave enough to step up and at least try, at least try. You see, I, I the ghetto fly, that's why the ghetto fly is so aggravating because he's everywhere, but he's nowhere. He's He's got everything to say, but he does nothing. The ghetto fly is attracted, for lack of a better word, to shit. He's attracted, and when he can't find no shit, he just fly around, hoping that maybe some shit will fall. The problem with the ghetto fly is that he doesn't understand that when there's no shit to be attracted to, he becomes a nuisance. And for all of us who are seeing things and feeling things and, and, and our spirit is being rejuvenated, he's just there while we are consuming 
what has come out of the heat, what has come out of. Can I teach in here this morning? I'm on my morning mental. As I said before, grand rising to all of you, grand rising to all of you. I want to do something that they're not going to do for us. I'd like to do a little bit of news reporting since we don't have a black media. We don't have a media outlet that will serve our purpose. We don't have uh, any organization for real that talks to the people. I'm on my morning mental. I need you to let somebody know because uh, we have a big announcement coming up. Oh, we're not stopping. We're still moving ahead. We just see we brushing that dirt off our shoulders. We finding out. How many people are really in this for the struggle and who's just in it to look good in the cup? You see, I want to do a little bit of news reporting before I teach on the morning mental. So for those of you all who just running around trying to find out about something that you didn't show up for, for y'all who running around saying, damn, I missed it and all of that. We're going to do a little bit of reporting first. And then I'm going to get into my lesson for this morning. And I would, like I said before, I know the ghetto fly is in here and I want him in here because I want him to, sh I want to show y'all what it's like when you're trying to teach the people, when you try to uh, lead your people, when you try to instruct your people, when you show people that the only way you can be an agent of change is you have to change yourself. You see, those people who claim to know me are quiet. Because they've seen the change. It's the people who don't know me, who do the, who go to the, they graduated from the University of Google. Yeah, you know those folks. They, um, uh, they attend, uh, the school of, guess what I heard? Um, these are graduates and, and they are the alumni of, 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 of the, the institution of gossip. Uh, those people, this does not apply to you because you're the one who's talking, but those people, who you ever know someone who actually changed? If you are, and I and I salute everybody, if you are a recovered alcoholic, I salute you. I've seen how damaging that can be in a person's life. And the, the, the damage that it that it reaps on family members. And but if you have recovered, never had another drink again. Never. It's been years. And every and people who know you who knew you in your alcoholism, they still look at you. They don't, they don't have to say nothing because they say she changed. He changed. He don't drink no more. I remember him. Mm. Same thing for y'all who had all type of little vices back in the day that I ain't going to talk about. Mm -hmm. There's a few of y'all that have been upgraded in life. You're not the person that you used to be and can't nobody walk up to you and tell nobody because that person don't know you. Because how can you understand who I am in my chapter six when you wasn't there in my chapter five or my chapter four or my chapter three? Come on with me, y'all. Or my chapter two. Somebody talk or my chapter one. How can you talk to me about who I am in my chapter six when you just got here? Young folks, it's not that we don't respect you. Young folks, it's not that we don't value your opinion. Young folks, it's not as if you don't count. You do. But what y'all don't seem to realize if an old brother can school you is life is like high school. Yeah, let me break. Y'all remember high school. You see. When you first get to high school, you're a freshman. You don't know nobody. You don't know none of the lingo. You don't know the, the politics. You don't know who's real and who's fake. All you know is for the next four years, you're going to be there. You're wide-eyed. You're friends with everybody. you victimized. You're naive. You might know a few people. Some of y'all might be in an elevated position by blood. Can I talk? Some of y'all might be viewed differently because yeah, we're on the morning mental. Yes, we is. Some of y'all might be on, in a situation where you got elevated because you came in because you were gifted. 
but you were new and you just got there and there were people above you and you had to be careful of the people above you because they knew certain things. They had spent more time in the institution. They had learned and they had made some mistakes and they had recovered. And now some of them, let's go through it. Some of them were sophomores. Some of them were juniors, college students. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of them were seniors and some of them were postgraduates. Why they were still there, I don't know, but they was there all the same. And it didn't take you long to realize, as we would say, you new booty. You just got here. You can't come in here and try to run things until you understand how to run things. You can't come in here and try to change things unless you understand the methodology of changing things. And you have to know the difference between those things you should devote your energy to changing and those things that are a part of the foundation and cannot be changed. I remember one time uh, I was in the military and they made us use, and if you know what this is, use Brasso, which is a chemical we use to clean brass. Um, and they wanted us to take some Brasso and they wanted us to go into the showers. And y'all remember this military folks. And they wanted us to Brasso the, the drains, the shower drains, the drain that everybody showered in, community shower. They want you to get on your knees with a toothbrush and some brasso and scrub it until it looked like gold. Oh, you thought it was the most degrading thing, but you was there to be on code. You was there to be unified. You was there to do as you were told without question. You was there because there was a greater goal that you knew that this was somehow a part of all of us getting to where we go. Now, when you got down there to clean it, you realized it had mold and mildew and had been there for, why did they pick this old drain? Well, they picked it. It wasn't because they wanted it clean. They wanted to teach you a lesson. And the lesson was, this is not going to be easy. Number two, you're going to have to adopt a strong fortitude. Number three, you're going to have to check your ego at the door. And number four, you have no say so no more. You do. They think. And then there's some folks that when they get down there and they start doing the work, you got other people that will come and they see the drain and it's all messed up. And they go like, why are you doing that? That's a waste of time. Don't do that. Just leave it like it is. It ain't nothing but a drain. But what you've been reading and studying, you realize that the only way out of here is to present a clean drain to the drill sergeant. So the drill sergeant will say, job well done. Now you can go and, and relax and call your folks and get something to eat and, you know, go read. And, but you got to present this correctly first. So we down there scrubbing on it and we scrubbing on it and we stay scrubbing. On, oh, we're on the morning mental right now. I'm scrubbing on it and we scrubbing on it. And eventually, if you work on it long enough, a strange thing starts to happen. It starts to change because we're working on it. We're working on it. Even when your hand get tired, we're still working on it. And even when your elbow get tired, you're still working on it. And even when you stop and take a break and go, man, I've been in here all day. You're still working on it, working on it. And then they come back in and say, all right, show me what you got. And you show them what you got. And he says, good job. But you got an attitude because you don't understand what the hell this has to do with anything. Well, roll the clock ahead forward now. And you you've been in the high school. We talked about for a minute. You have now been elevated to a senior. You understand that, that there are some things you can change, some things you can't. And you also understand what was done to get you to that particular stage. See, what I'm trying to tell y'all is we as a people are going through an exercise right now where the ghetto fly who's flying around me right now, he's trying to figure out why we are doing what we're doing because they don't have the fortitude. He ain't got no hands, so he's not going to be down here with a scrubbing. Matter of fact, He's flying around looking because his peoples are too afraid to come out here. So they sent him to check it out. And when he finds out 
what we really going to do, he going to run back and tell them. Because a lot of them, they ain't even going to bust a grape in the fruit fight and come over here. Because there's one thing about the ghetto fly that I didn't tell you. Is that we have the ability to kill them at a moment's notice. And we don't even have to use the things that we would have to use in warfare. We don't have to use the things that we would normally use that's designed to kill them. You see, they so weak. We can kill them with a dish rag. Y'all ever seen somebody who's smooth with a dish rag on the ghetto fly? They just say, ow! And it's a wrap. You a cold piece, Jay. You took me out. No, y'all keep forgetting like I told you. We've been under pressure. And now that we've been under pressure, well, here come the beauty of the whole thing. Let me show y'all why it's good to be under pressure. You see all that hot water that I put in here and that organic tea that I put in here. It's been under pressure. It's been working together. And now the heat has started to put it together, but it's not quite ready yet. You know why? Here's why. Because even though you can join up and look like us, even though you can stand around and try to blend in with us, even though you in the heat with us, if you survive that part, here it comes. Well, there's something else that you have to have. Y'all hold on a minute. We on the morning mental. You see. Only the creator, only Yah, can sweeten a situation that you thought was meant for bad. Only Yah is going to give you the flavor. Oh, yeah, and by the way, in case y'all don't know, this is completely uh, pure, uh, organic Honey, from the farm, not from the store. The man down the street got a, you know, he got his own bees and they're making their own real honey. And if you don't know the nutritional value of pure honey, if you don't know that, then you don't know how I try to hold on to my youthful looks. If you're not putting this in the correct way. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of this in here. Mm -hmm, not a whole lot. Just enough to sweeten the situation. I can eat honey all day. Y'all, y'all playing around. Don't, don't somebody talk to me in here. Now what we have is something different. Now you done been through the heat. Now you done been through the pressure. Now what they want, what the ghetto fly been waiting on. See, he buzzing now because that aroma done got to his ears, but he realized he ain't put in no work. I mean, unless you don't put in the work, unless you don't been under pressure, unless you know what it's like to have the adversary face you, unless you know that you face your fear, even when things went wrong, then you deserve oh. And that's what makes this all worth it. What I'm sipping is the success of being able to say, we did it. Oh, y'all know we about to act up on the morning mental this morning. They want to take away our thunder. They want to try to talk about on a Monday morning like it was a disaster. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I remember somebody told me a long time ago, never let anyone tell your story better than you. So I want to, first of all, start off and give you a news report. And the news report goes a little something like this. Um, on... Saturday, July 25th, 2020, a historical event happened in black history. On that day, a, a black militia that went by the name of the NFAC assembled themselves in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, to seal a deal that had been worked out with the law enforcement and the governing bodies and the ruling principalities of that city to address the murder or the killing of a black woman by the name of Breonna Taylor. Um, this was after weeks and weeks and weeks of 
protesting by the citizens and other individuals who came to raise awareness that it did not seem fair uh, that this young lady had been killed in her home by the police and whether or not it was an accident or, 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 or screw up or maybe even being targeted because of some nefarious reason. Uh, the fact that there did not appear to be the visibility of any judicial uh, handling of the situation uh, really became an issue with the community and they felt that a stronger response was needed. As usual, we only uh, can respect the power of the law as long as the law is respected by the people and the people are respected by the law. So on this particular day, uh, something that had never happened before in the annals of history in recent memory was that and we've got the count now, 3,522 black people. And when I say black, because I have to be clear here, it wasn't just black people. There were people out there that you don't call black that were actually black that were out there. There was, I have to salute the, the Taino folks that came from uh, Puerto Rico who are actually descendants. They are black people. I have to salute the people who came out that were actually of South American descent and they were black people. I have to salute all of the people who came out and stood the ground even when other people said, you're not black. I watched my black people tell each each other that they wasn't black and what did we do if you was out there see they don't show y'all everything we actually would pull that person out and a bunch of black people would gather around who had an issue with this person that did not appear to be black and they broke it down he said this in the morning mental he said this in facts over feelings the people were being diligent to keep infiltrators and non-blacks folk out of this gathering. And there were some folks that they were shocked to find out that I let them plead their case in front of everyone. And if you wasn't there, you didn't see this. But what we did was we erased all of the divisions that they put on us since the 1700s. We erased racism right there because no matter what they said, I stood up as the judge. And after everybody said, I don't think he black, we made these people prove they blackness. People was pulling out birth certificates. People were pulling out, uh, uh, showing their descendants cards. There was one couple that came and I, y'all thought I would, I forgot. I didn't forget. There was one couple that came though. His wife truly looked like she was white. Her husband, truly looked like he was black when we pulled them out of the formation to ask them from whom sent you where did you come what nationality do you claim why are you here they was prepared and the brother let the sister speak first and she says i know i look like this but let me show you some bam okay and then the husband said that's my wife and that's right that's why i brought her i told her she was black but she wasn't gonna believe she was black until she got here around black folks and somebody like yourself and your counsel told her she was black and we told her she was black and everybody out there had a moment where we hugged on them and loved on them sister you just as black don't let nobody confuse you that was unity coming together out there now, there was some folks out there who's like ghetto fly we saw you they eased away they eased away they left because they knew they looking for real black folks and I remember I said to elect lady Tay, I said, Tay, this is a black moment. This is a moment in black history. Remember this. Take pictures, capture it because no one's going to tell the story. No one. It was good to be black. That gathering was historical for a number of reasons. Thirty five hundred folks all strapped up from all over the United States. Please stop trying to put us down into one place. And those folks got together under the banner of the NFAC. And those people assembled themselves and they moved their formation, which took up not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six city blocks. Six city blocks, orderly, of black folks and they move down through the neighborhoods. They move down through the region to the gentrification area. They move down to the city, into the heart of the city, not just into the city, not out on some interstate, not out uh, in, in, in where the shooting happened. 
not out at somebody's house, but they move down to where the powers to be could witness them, hear them, and feel them because the Constitution said they had a right to assemble themselves and form a militia so that they could have their grievances heard. And if the grievances were not heard, then they were entitled to respond with militant action. A lot of y'all don't understand that the guns are not there as a primary response. The guns are there when you have a lack of a response. That's how this country was started. That's how revolutions began. That is how the Haitian Revolution started. That is how the French Revolution started. That is how every one of every revolution has started. When the grievances are not addressed or ignored, somebody pulled the trigger. But we went so that we could get an answer on the grievances. This was a historical moment, black people. Your people came together and shattered so many myths. Black people can't get together, do nothing. Black people got together and did everything. Black people are violent. Black people were not violent at all. Black people, I keep, I'm going to keep carrying, this is going to be carrying this book around until y'all get it. You need to get this book, Brainwash, Tom Burrell. You need to get it because you've been brainwashed. And we were out there washing minds all day. When we got done, what a lot of y'all have not heard yet, was that within, within an hour of these people who had done this historical thing, by the time they left the powers to be who were watching and listening to every word because they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know what we were going to do. Let's be honest, in the back of everybody's mind was their deepest fears about to come true. And that's this, that this black man, could he be crazy enough to get up there and use these words? We don't want to hear this shit no more. Hey, y'all, tear this motherfucker up. That's their worst nightmare. And they saw they came that close to it. You see, the point I'm making to y'all this morning on the morning mental is it's easy to talk about something until you face it for real. It's easy to talk about how brave you are until your bravery is tested. And it's easy to talk about and have an opinion and commentate on something you had nothing to do with when you know that inside of your heart and your soul, you will have nothing to do with something like that. I remember one young man put up a video and he talked about how, how cowardly he was. He admitted, he said, man, y'all go ahead and do that. Me, I'm not built like that. He was sad to see a brother say that, but at least he was honest that he was a coward. But a lot of y'all are cowards and you hide behind this bravado. You know, you, you're talk smack. And what I'm getting at is this. I told y'all before we went to Louisville that all of this talk I saw on the internet, didn't I tell y'all to ignore it? All the people who said they wasn't going to have it, didn't I tell you they weren't going to be there? All the people who came out talking about we coming down there, it's going to be war in the streets, we rallying up the patriots, didn't come down. Now, matter of fact, let me help you out in this news report this morning of something that I should call the, the, the morning mental facts over feelings. I don't know. But at the end of the day, even a handful of white people that did try to show up got met by the police and they told them, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. look, y'all got to go. No, we're here because we're not having it. And they said, y'all ain't having it. You take your ass around that corner. You're not going to have what's happening around that corner. Bro, it's just this many of y'all. There is a multitude around there. A multitude. They will kill you. They will wipe your ass up and they are ready. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. People will say to you, why don't y'all stop talking and just do it? See, here's the problem. We would shut up 
and just do it if there was somebody else like me on the forefront that would communicate you in an effective way what we were doing and not lie about it and twist about it because they are not a part of it. That's why. You see, the beauty of what we're doing right now, black people, is that they see that we are not only tactically proficient, that we can organize ourselves just like anybody else can, but that we're not robots. We're not perfect. None of you are. Matter of fact, I do this all the time because I don't want to offend the perfect people that have tuned in. I know a lot of y'all dripped out the womb in perfection and you float around on air. I don't mean to offend the perfect people. Perfect people, please. I don't mean you can go ahead and fall off. Go ahead and fall off right now. We, I only want imperfect people in here right now. I only want people who are struggling with something right now up in here. I only want people that have fucked up in here. I just want real people in here. I, but all y'all that's perfect. We trying to be like y'all, but I know y'all perfect and y'all shit don't stink. Y'all ain't got a pass. I want y'all. I just don't want to offend y'all. Yeah, there's a perfect, I'm pretty sure there's a perfect podcast for perfect people going on down the street. I'm, 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 I'm on a fin, y'all. And y'all, the rest of y'all be cool. Let's let the perfect people leave. We appreciate you, perfect people. Yep, your stuff don't stink, perfect people. But to the real people, you know, the people that, they're not walking around saying to the most high, give me a second chance. We're talking to the ones that's on they, 156 chance. We talk to the ones that's on a thousandth chance. We're talking on the ones that every day you get to open your eyes, you say, whew, I get to do it one more time to get it right. Those are the people that I want to stay up in here. Grand rising to all of you. But to the perfect folks and the ones that, you know, the judges, you know, we're going to let y'all leave. I'm going to wait because this is not for y'all. Mm -hmm. Have the perfect people left? They all left? Okay, we got, we sure. All the perfect people gone. I want to make sure y'all gone. If y'all see somebody who's perfect, please let them know that they can go ahead and leave. Perfect people only. I mean, this, is a, this is not for perfect people. I need some people who've fucked up. I need some people who are, ha haven't quite got there yet. I need some people who are still trying to figure it out. I need some people that got questions. I need, I need them to stay. Everybody else, perfect people. So glad y'all can stop by. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. for, those, for the rest of us who understand that this is earth and it is a classroom, not for your pleasure, it's written in the book, that it is for the perfecting of your soul. This is a crucible for the development of your soul. So if you were a part of this historic event, your soul was tested. Mm -hmm. And your soul, if you went through this, was developed because there were lessons that were taught within this particular session. In this particular session, we developed your sense of camaraderie. We developed your sense of bravery. I would like to thank all of the people who have now come out with the video of the incident that had that happened before all these great things that I told you. You see, all those things that I told you about the getting together and the going down and the standing the post and speaking to power and power having to speak back within an hour to say, yes, we talk with these folks. Yes, their message is legitimate. I don't know about that timeline. You notice he didn't want to uh, you know, put us on the clock. I gave you what you should give the people. You have four weeks. Now, the people are looking for something in four weeks. And we have told you that in four weeks, if you don't give us something, congratulations, we're going to give you something. You see, we didn't have a problem showing you how you should do us. We spoke clearly to you. We were transparent with you. We showed you our hand. We brought our peoples and we, we started the clock because you haven't given these people a clock. Matter of fact, you haven't shown them your hand. As a matter of fact, nobody wants to deal with it. You're treating it like a hot potato. The bottom line is we went down and put structure to a structureless situation. We came down and put a clock on a clockless situation. We came down and let the will of the people be manifested in such a way that if you didn't get it before, because maybe you didn't understand what all these same old chants you hear all the time, or maybe you didn't understand what all the walking around in circles like you walk around Jericho, maybe you didn't understand that. But you understood this, that the NFAC came to Louisville, came to the powers to be, talked 
to the powers to be understood the situation from the powers to be and then partnered with the powers to be so that none of our people will get caught up in what was meant for you. That was a historical moment. And if you all notice, if you still don't believe that racism exists, if you still don't believe in systemic racism, then how do you explain the fact that the same group of people, uh, they made history on July 4th? The largest armed, organized, open carry uh, incident, march, call it what you will, that happened since the Black Panthers. Nobody got hurt. Nothing happened. Didn't get a drop of coverage. Why? Because it would have empowered the people. Remember, when you're a freshman, you don't know no better. Youngins pay attention. But to those of y'all who are seniors, you was like, I ain't seen nothing like that since my freshman year. But it's not in the school newspaper. But oh, once again. We went and did it again. And this time it was bigger, more people, more people, more people, which means the percentage of something happening goes up. And the only thing that the systemic racism people wanted to talk about was something that happened before the miracle happened. They don't want to talk about how we got to the promised land. They want to talk about the trip to the promised land. Oh, I got to take a break right now. They telling us because the morning mental is going to be on a little longer. I will come back and join y'all in five minutes and we're going to finish getting into why it's hot in here. And if you can't stand the heat, you need to get out the kitchen. The morning mental. I'll be right back. Don't y'all go nowhere. Shalom. Shalom.